No matter your watercolor skill level, mini flowers are great fun and they're great practice. So that's exactly what we're doing today. Join me as we paint nine beautiful florals, all from my favorite book, The Flower Color Guide. Welcome back friends, my name is Shada Campbell and today we are painting a whole bunch of watercolor flowers. We're using my favorite reference book, The Flower Color Guide, and we're gonna take a look at every flower we paint today. We're going to paint mini florals, but we always wanna capture some of the truth of each flower. Starting with the cone flower or echinacea, I'm looking at the details, large stamen, petals that fall down and away even those funny little guys with the sparse petals. If we can capture some of the truth of that flower, we can simplify while still making it recognizable and beautiful. And I'm also gonna paint the hyacinth, so take a quick look at it. Look at those big round blossoms, and let's jump right in. It's the first weekend of the month, and that means there's an extra tutorial for all my supporters over on Patreon. To see how I created this graphic modern wall art, head over to patreon.com slash Campbell. It's only two two bucks to join or $22 for the year. I'll start by mixing up the purpley pink that I need for that cone flower. I'm using a blend of magenta and purple. I'm also going to mix a little bit of white in there to lighten it slightly. You'll notice I have two glasses of clean water, one uh, for cool colors and one for warm colors. And just a reminder that the full supply rundown is at the end of the video. So if you wanna know everything I'm using, uh, skip to the end or wait until the end. And then if you want to purchase any of these supplies, everything is linked in the video description. It's a great way for you to get exactly what I'm using and shopping those Amazon links helps to support this channel. So for the coneflower, my green is a mix of sap green with a little Van Dyke brown and I've got a little bit of uh, deep thallo green on the palette as well. I'm also using yellow ochre or actually raw sienna <laughs> and then I have that Van Dyke brown sitting there too. And those are the colors we're going to start with. So use that raw sienna, paint a little semicircle, and then using the tip of that round brush, the fine point, you're going to put some little spikes on the semicircle. Then we rinse our brush, pick up that pinky purple hue that we mixed, and we will start painting one petal at a time. And each petal takes me one or two brush strokes. So just a nice smooth run of the brush across the paper, starting from the stamen and going out. You can make some of them quite thick, some a little thinner. And then I wanna darken them slightly at the top, right where they meet the stamen. Let's do another one. Let's do that funny little guy that we saw. I start by drawing a circle sort of with the paint and then I'm doing these thin sparse petals. So leave some weird gaps in there. Don't get hung up on sy symmetry or perfection. You can use a mix of Van Dyke Brown and Raw Sienna to paint the stamen at the center. And then we'll use that deep dark green that we mixed and we've just got a bit on the tip of our brush there and we're doing thin straight stems and some leaves that are sort of halfway down the stem. They're nowhere near the flower. So even though we're painting mini florals, mini florals are a great chance for us to simplify and not get hung up on a lot of details. But even though we're working small and we're working simple, we're capturing some of the truth of the flower. And we do that by looking at the reference material and picking out certain details, like the sparse petals, like the leaves being uh, lower down on the stem. I use Van Dyke Brown to add the little spikes and dots to that stamen put a bit of darker green on some of those leaves, and then finally came in with that really rich blend of magenta and purple and darkened the tops of the petals, just like I saw in the reference photo. Our next flower is a mini hyacinth. So this color is a blend of light blue and purple with a little bit of white. I've got a lot in my brush and then I'm using my round brush to just make this round cluster. I'm looking at the reference photo and I can see that, you know, the flowers are these very bulbous, very conical. So we wanna get the shape and the petals kind of curl up and out. So I'm doing a few uh, brush strokes that kind of flick out from this cone shape and I've, put a little bit of darker purple into some areas, working a little wet into wet magic. I just let that color blend and blur. And that's, you know, letting the watercolors do the work for you. My second flower is just a little bit more purple. So a little more purple, a little less light blue and having them both be slightly different colors. It just adds, you know, to the liveliness, the organic look of those flowers. 
Now, some details that I noticed about the stems and leaves are that the hyacinth has quite a thick stem. So I want to capture that. And I also want to capture that pea green, really nice bright spring color and those thick wide leaves that have just a little bit of a curve to them. We've captured those as well. And then the final step here is just to take a few brush strokes, a little bit of that periwinkle, a darker periwinkle, and put some dots and brush marks. That's going to make the hyacinth look like it is made up of all these little blossoms, which of course it is, but you don't actually have to paint a bunch of tiny flowers. You just have to do some simple dots. Whether I'm working small or large, this is my method. I like to simplify, but I never want to lose the flower in that simplification process. And the next flower that we're going to paint is a rose. And there's lots of roses uh, featured in the flower color guide. What I'm seeing here are dark green petals that kind of frame the flower really beautifully and layers and layers of petals. So we got to find a way to paint those layers. I'm going to work in a really nice light yellow, a yellow so light it is almost white. So I have mixed a whole bunch of white watercolor paint with a little bit of Naples yellow. You could also put just a hint of brown in there. And with that creamy color on your brush, we're going to paint a sort of bowl shape. So I like to start with that one middle petal and you think of painting a cereal bowl where you can just see the edge of the back and you've got this semicircle shape. Now around the semicircle, we're going to paint some flower or petals falling away. So just do some messy brush marks along the curve at the bottom of that bowl shape. Keep it very thin and delicate across the top, across the back of the curve, and then pick up a little bit of raw sienna and just do some dotting in that uh, area where you left the negative space inside the bowl. From there, we notice in our reference material that the flower was framed by lots of dark leaves and they're an oval shape. They come to a bit of a point. So that's what we're painting here. I'm just running the belly of the brush across the page. One or two brush strokes gives you a leaf don't overwork your paints and paint as many leaves as you like joined by some thin stems. By this point, the flower has begun to dry and we want to add some definition. So I just added a little French gray to that creamy color. You can see it's like a darker beigey cream. And I'm putting some messy brush strokes around the base of the rose um, at the bottom of each petal. And I'll finish up by putting just a few dots of Van Dyke Brown on that raw sienna at our center. Let's grab our reference book because the next flower is Larkspur. What I'm noticing is the flowers are very small. They're clustered in a lot of areas and the leaves and stems almost look weedy. So those are a few of the things I'm thinking about as I begin to paint. I'm using light blue mixed with white and you can see I'm just making these messy floral shapes, four or five petals. Some are just three petals. Some are just like little heart shapes. Keep these blossoms loose, keep them messy, don't overthink it. Then you're gonna come in with a little bit of sap green on the tip of your brush and paint these really thin stems that are fairly straight and there's lots of them. There's lots of this straight grassy uh, branches and these thin tiny leaves that curve outward. Now, if your sap green looks too bright, you can always mix a little brown or red into it to kind of deaden it slightly, give it a more organic look. And then once you're done the leaves and stems, the flowers should be drier and you can come in with a darker blue, maybe mix a little cobalt into your light blue, and you're going to do a whole bunch of tiny little lines to sort of frame the outside of each flower. Just these really thin little brush strokes. Once you're done that, take a little bit of black or a really dark brown just on the tip of that brush, put a few dots, a little circle of dots, maybe at the center of each flower. And finally, to make sure we capture that weedy, messy look of the Larkspur, take a very watery green and just put a few more leaves and stems peeking out from behind. Our fifth mini flower is one of my favorites, Japanese anemone. There's a lot of this growing in my neighborhood every autumn and I love to paint it. It's a beautiful light pink color. So I'm noticing the color, I'm noticing the shape of the flower and definitely those thin stems that seem to have the weirdest curves to them. So I've got a little bit of magenta here mixed with a whole lot of white, a little bit of purple in there too and I'm going to paint a single anemone flower. We're going to go around and paint one petal at a time, just making a big 
messy brush stroke, kind of running the brush around in a circle. And we wanna make sure that all the petals connect. You can see me kind of reshaping the flower while the paint is still wet. I wanna capture the shape that I see in my reference material. Then I'm taking a really warm green, so mix a little extra red or brown into that sap green. And we're going to paint the stem that does come to a bit of a wonky curve right before the flower. We'll add a, a messy sort of shaggy leaf. And then I wanna get one of those buds, those drooping round bulbous anemone buds in there too. I always like to get a little blend of the pink and green, but in this case, the blend was too much. So what do we do? There's always a way to erase. While the paint is wet, you take a damp, clean brush and just press it against the area that you want to erase in quotes, in air quotes, and you'll be able to pick up the pigment. So I was able to get rid of that sort of green burst. I put a little bit of darker green on the leaf and then for the stamen I'm going around with raw sienna or yellow ochre and just doing a big circular burst of little dots and delicate lines. Now I also want to add some detail to this anemone. So just on the tip of my brush I have the same pink that I used but mixed with a little bit of French grey and I kind of outlined the flower. And then I wanna place a little bit of a shadow on some of those petals as well, just so that they look like they're curving and you know that the sun wouldn't hit them all equally, it creates a little depth. Finally, you'll finish it off by just placing a nice light green right in the center to complete the stamen. Let's take another look at our reference book, The Flower Color Guide. The flower I wanna paint next is the Cosmo. And this is a pretty Cosmo. I love this blood red shade. I'm looking at the way the petals, the, the petals, the petals all fan out. They're sort of uh, wonky and weird. You know, there's some of the, there's gaps between some of them. So those are some of the things I wanna capture. We don't have to capture every last bit of the flower. We just need to capture some of that truth. And that's why it's so nice to have a reference book like this one. And I've linked it in the description below. So make sure to grab a copy for yourself. It's going to improve your painting so much. I'm using a blend of red with a little bit of purple to darken it and I want to paint these in a cluster. I'm going to do three I think and for each petal I'm doing one or two brush strokes. You know I just want the petals to look very organic and natural and I want them to look a little weird and funny. Once you've painted your cluster, add a little more purple to that dark red that you've mixed and we're just going to darken part of each flower. So we want the petals on one side of each flower to be a little darker, like the light just isn't hitting there as easily. And while you're doing this, you can also darken the center as well. And then we want to um, capture those th very thin stems that have the weird sort of curve in random spots, very similar to the anemone stem and a very similar color as well. So this is sap green with a little bit of red in it and I just have it on the tip of my brush there so that I can do really thin curving line and maybe one or two little shaggy leaves. Okay, we've already done six flowers. We have three more to go, and our seventh is going to be Mimosa. I love this flower. It's sort of like painting a berry, and if you are doing like a larger composition, Mimosa is one of those flowers that can add a real delicacy uh, to a larger piece. You know, if you can incorporate it with some larger flowers, it looks so pretty. So we're going to use a real true lemon yellow and paint some clusters of circles and some are a little larger and then you know they kind of get a little smaller as we go down the length of the stem that's one of the things that I'm seeing in the photo so everything gets smaller the leaves the branches so everything is sort of tiny towards the top of the flower and a little larger down here at the base and those are some of the key details that I want to capture I'm using sap green and just using like a singular brush stroke to paint each leaf. So don't overwork those paints, just pull that brush across the page and let it be a leaf, you know, a nice, thin, delicate leaf. And the mimosa, you can make it as large as you want. It's one of those ones that you can build out and out and out. So you can keep adding branches and keep adding more little yellow dots. Not everything has to connect, you know, it's just so delicate and beautiful. And that's what we're trying to capture. 
Let's move right along to Narcissus. I just love the white with that really deep, dark orange. It's so pretty. And so of course, part of this that we really wanna capture is just that color. I'm using a blend of white, a little bit of Naples yellow, and a little hint of French gray. And we are going to paint this flower one petal at a time. So just run that brush across the page. One or two brush strokes gives you a petal shape and you want five petals, kind of fanning out like a star. I know mixing these white colors can be a little tricky. I, I, with nine flowers, I can only dedicate so much time to color mixing. I do have a wonderful Patreon video uh, all about painting white flowers, and I'm gonna link it in the description. To join Patreon is only two bucks a month or $22 for the year, and there are loads of extra tutorials over there. So go take a peek and help support this channel. We're gonna let that dry before we paint the stamen. So let's move on to our final flower, which is the Agapantha. And this one is like a tricky one to paint, but it's also gonna be fun. <laughs> so this is one where you just wanna capture some details and not get hung up on realism. I'm taking a blend of light blue and purple, so this very periwinkle color, and I'm painting some blossom shapes, like little five and four petal flowers, but I'm also just painting some kind of V shapes, like little cones, and they're all kind of clustered. I wanna make sure that whatever I paint, whether it's dots or lines or flowers, that it all kind of forms a circle. So that's the main thing. Use some bluey, purpley shades and paint a bunch of brush marks that form a circle. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to all be little flowers. Once you've completed that circle, you're gonna take a little sap green and we are going to paint the strong, uh, straight stem and then we're gonna do a bunch of thin little lines that kind of curve up and out like they're fanning out and they join all of those little blue bits together of course they don't actually have to reach each blue bit but you just want to place a whole bunch of green brush marks in there thin lines and by now our Narcissus has dried, so we come back in with a super dark orange. I'm using a color called Light Red, and we're just painting that conical shape for the stamen. You can sort of do an inverted rounded triangle, and maybe add a little bit of French gray to the base of some of those petals, sort of close to that stamen. And that's it guys, we painted nine mini flowers and we used this wonderful book that I've had for about five years now and we captured the truth of these flowers while simplifying, while using just really organic gestural brush strokes. You know, we kept it simple, we kept it easy, but we kept it true, we kept it real. Also, what am I saying? Oh my goodness. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I had a lot of fun painting with you. And for anybody who would like those exact supplies, here they are. Today I was working on a block of arches paper. This is hot pressed, 140 pound, eight by 10 is the size. And you can see it's on a block, so all the paper is stuck together, meaning it's stretched out for me. And when I finish, I just peel the page off. I have my Mungyo set of paints. It's a 48 pan set that I just love to work with. Great value for your money. Two glasses of clean water. I had paper towel for blotting my brush on and then I I did I think the whole painting with a number six round brush you really don't need a, a lot of variation in your brushes for these mini paintings maybe use a smaller like a number four if you're getting started and a large brush makes it feel like you're out of control and then finally the flower color guide was the star of the show and you can shop that on Amazon use the links in the video description thanks for being here make sure to hit that subscribe button and I will see you soon with a new tutorial.